Pacers could have been 500, and they're not. They blow a game. Blow is a strong word, but they lose a game they could have, maybe should have won in New Orleans against the banged-up Pelicans by seven. The whole stretch of game that lost them this game was in the second quarter, but I will tell you this is another game where the Pacers held a fourth-quarter lead and didn't get it done. That's already three times this season that that's happened to them in their four losses. They've got to get over that to have any hope of getting a little stringing together some wins, two and four right now, and have not won consecutive games this year, leading in every quarter of this game, but could not get it done. And the reason is quite simple. Uh, the, the stars for the Pelicans were much better than the stars for the Pacers. Before we get to that, we have a lot to touch on for this game because this game had every single bad element you could want for the Pacers. Missing a starter, then losing a starter, then losing another reserve. This is already on top of injuries they have elsewhere. It just was a bad night <laughs> in so many ways for the Pacers. The way they lost, what else they lost. As their season progresses, they're 2-4 and four and already down quite a few players. So keep that in mind as we talk that Andrew Nemhard didn't play at all. Aaron Neesmith played only in the first half, only 10 minutes. Isaiah Jackson got hurt in the third quarter. So the Pacers played 10 guys in this game. But like Jarris Walker only played after Neesmith left. And after Isaiah Jackson left, they had to go small at times. Like Miles Turner was in foul trouble. The rotations were strange. The lineups were weird. And that's not why they lost. They still should have been better in this game. I did a podcast over on my podcast, Locked on Pacers, the day before this game. And I said, I think the Pacers will win if they defend, and specifically if they defend the Pelican Stars. And that sounds obvious, but in this game specifically, with how banged up New Orleans was, and is, right? If you slow one of the Stars, they will not be able to score enough. They just wouldn't have. And then, in the end, that didn't happen at all. Ingram, 26 Zion Williamson, 34. They combined for 60 points, 12 rebounds, and 17 assists. They are both plus 17. That's the game. A lot of other players from New Orleans were like fine or good enough. Brandon Boston had some nice moments. Jordan Hawkins did as well. But the Pacers had good role players in this game too. Isaiah Jackson pre-injury was good. Aaron Neesmith pre-injury was excellent. Ben Matherin was solid as a starter. Obi Toppin was efficient. TJ McConnell was fantastic, as was Ben Shepard. Ben Shepard, the Pacers player of the game. Most likely, right? That is enough role player success to win a game for the Pacers. But it wasn't because the stars were not good enough. Siakam was fine with 16, 5, and 6, but you didn't feel him in the way you have in other games this season. Uh, his defense wasn't at that same level. This is a tougher matchup for him defensively. He did fine on Ingram, but not on Zion. Uh, but, you know, he, he was efficient, 7 for 13. He made 40% of his threes, but it didn't feel like the same Siakam game as the one we just saw, and 16 points in 31 minutes. It's not even close to 34 or 26 from the Pelican Stars in similar minutes, just a little more for them. And then Tyrese Halliburton, after, you know, this, is, he, this will be remembered as a double-double. The stats say it. I believe that's three in a row now for him. But same with Siakam, didn't feel it. Two for eight, 11 points because he got to the foul line. That's a good thing, to be clear. 11 assists. They lost Tyrese Halliburton's minutes by 19 points. 13, minus 13 in Benedict Matherin's minutes, minus 19 in Miles Turner's minutes. Siakam was okay, so this is going to be, this is going to come out harsher than the game really suggested. But, I mean, the, the Pacers' three best players, Turner, Siakam, and Halbert, none of them were up to the level they needed to be to win. If one of them was, the Pacers probably win this game. None of them were. Siakam was probably close. Uh, the other two were not, right? Turner was in foul trouble, was not doing well on the glass, um, wasn't it forceful enough inside. Four turnovers for Miles Turner, too. That was really killer. Almost a third of the Pacers' full turnovers. So that, to me, is the biggest difference, is the Stars separated everything for New Orleans. That's the one thing the Pacers needed, and they didn't get it. That really hurts. I mean, they will look back at this game and say that defense was their concern in general. They couldn't stop the Pelicans from runs ever. New Orleans' worst quarter was 27 points. That's not going to cut it. New Orleans, the New Orleans Pelicans had more fast break points than the Pacers in this game. The New Orleans Pelicans only had six turnovers, right? Lots of defensive stats for the Pacers that just aren't quite good enough. They did better, not great, but better on the glass, right? They were within seven there, but the turnover difference was, was brutal. Very low free throw game, and in the end, the Pelicans take 12 more shots than the Pacers. I mean, that's just, it's impossible to overcome, especially when the Stars are among those 12 shots for New Orleans and crushing it. So if you remember this game, a game the Pacers could have won, winning big, up 13 in the first half, winning in the fourth quarter, finding success with important players, 
They did not get enough from their stars and could not stop the other team's stars to any extent to get it done. It's been a theme of their entire season. They've just been getting run over by other team's star players. And let's be clear, that's why they're stars, right? Those players run over lots of teams. But Bancaro and Maxi and Williamson, I don't, I'd have to check Cade's numbers again, but I believe Cade Cunningham, I mean, every game. Uh, an opposing team star goes over their season average in scoring. In this game, I believe two of them did for New Orleans. It just can't happen, which stinks because this could have been in a whole video of me just gushing about how awesome Ben Shepard was and Ben Matherin was huge in the second half and all this stuff. Aaron Neesmith got hurt but saved the day with how good he was in the first half. Nope, none of that. Pacers lose again. They're 2-4. and four. Had a chance to get to 500 against a banged-up team. Make their early season look a little better than it has been. Instead, it's not looking good with a tough game in Dallas coming on Monday. Now there's a layer number two to this game, and this is very concerning for the Pacers. Already without James Wiseman. And then they're also without Andrew Nemhard for this game. So that's two of their 14 players. They had Quinton Jackson, so that makes 15. Their other two players, I believe we've seen in videos and pictures, are practicing with the Mad Ants right now. So they did not have Enrique Freeman or Tristan Newton. So that's 15 players. Andrew Nemhard down. That Or sorry, yeah, it's 15 players. Andrew Nemhard down makes 14. Uh, it does look like Enrique Freeman was there, so I've just tripped all over myself. Let's start over. 16 players, Andrew Nemhard down, that's 15. Aaron Neesmith goes down, that's 14. James Wiseman out, that's 13. Isaiah Jackson gets hurt, that's 12. And among those 12 are rookie Enrique Freeman, rookie Johnny Furphy, James Johnson and whatever he can give you, that's three. Now you're down to nine, and one of those nine is Quentin Jackson, right? You are very quickly getting low on bodies as the Pacers. They played 10 players today, and those 10 were their usual starters minus Nemhard, and then their usual bench, right? And then they lost two of those. <laughs> they are getting very light on players. They might have to, by default, rely on one of Freeman, Furphy, or Jackson in Dallas to play in a, a rotation, right? It's going to be tough depending on what is learned about Jackson's injury, which you never want to guess, but it looked similar to Wiseman's, unfortunately. And that would be two centers down. So Enrique Freeman immediately becomes important. If if it's the worst for Jackson, just terrible. Terrible for him and the team. Uh, and Neesmith looked like he hurt his ankle kind of twice. His didn't look like the worst thing, even though it still looked very painful uh, on his ankle. We will see where this goes. But if the Pacers are down two starters and both of their reserve centers... In Dallas, that's going to be a tough game. They need all the firepower they can get to beat the Mavs and get back on track. And they might be extremely light on available bodies going forward for an already 2-4 and four team that has a brutal early season schedule. Terrible timing. They needed this game very badly. They needed the Philly game very badly. Either one of those games won, they would have been playing bad and still be 3-3. Three and three. And people could be like, okay, once they click, it'll be fine. Instead, they give up another one where they're winning in the fourth quarter. They've played, they have five games where they've been winning in the fourth quarter this season of their six, they've only won two of them. Got to be better closing. Got to be a better team. Instead, we're talking about the two and four Pacers. I'll have more on the Lockdown Pacers podcast if you want to listen to that. If you're on this channel, uh, I have a video on the Stephanie White higher up that you can watch. She's the new Fever head coach. We'll have more on that come Monday when she is introduced to reporters. Monday, we'll also have more from Pacers Mavs. Uh, because that game is Monday night at 9.45 p.m. for some reason. Although I believe the time change won't make it feel so bad. Thank you guys for watching this one. Bummer of a game. Plenty more on Lockdown Pacers. Thanks for watching. See you soon.